Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Amen. So, we're reading the documents of Vatican II, and we're on Lumen Gentium, the dogmatic constitution of the Church, which was promulgated, it was 1963, I think. 1964, November of 1964, from the Second Vatican Council. And I'm using Austin Flannery <coughs> edition uh, from the Vatican collection. This printing is called Vatican Council II, Volume 1, Conciliar and Post-Conciliar Documents, published by Costello, Publishing Company, or Costello, Northport, New York, and Dominican Publications, Dublin, Ireland, in 1975. And this is the, from the fourth printing, 1998. I think there's been a, another print since that. Uh, there's also, of course, the Abbott uh, edition that you can use in, in the paper. And there are others. The Daughters of St. Paul put one out. Uh, there are other, other uh, editions of the, 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 I think the translations are all the same, but uh, they have different commentaries and stuff in it and different setups. And also, you can get this, you can also get this online. You can get a free download of this from St. Mary's University, lib.stmarytx.edu. And uh, you can get this from www vatican.va slash archive slash council slash documents of the Second Vatican Council uh, in English, you want English. Also, ewtn.com slash Catholicism slash library slash 16 documents of the Second Vatican Council. You can get that from that as well. So let's pray. And this is on page, if you're using this, page 368. So it's chapter 2 of the people of God, and it's the number 17, number 17, from page 368 in the uh, Austin Flannery. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, amen. Come, gracious spirit, heavenly dove, with light and comfort from above. Be thou our guardian, be thou our guide, o'er every thought and step ere preside. O heavenly King, comfort a spirit of truth who are everywhere present and filling all things. O treasury of blessings and giver of life, come dwell within us and cleanse our souls, O gracious Lord. Holy God, holy mighty one, holy immortal one, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy mighty one, holy immortal one, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy mighty one, holy immortal one, have mercy on us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and if it shall be, world without end. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful, and enkindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your Spirit, and they shall be created, and you shall renew the face of the earth. So, uh, number 17 of Lumen Gentium, the dogmatic constitution of the church. As he had been sent by the Father, the Son himself sent the apostles to John 20, 21. And in Matthew, Matthew 28, 18 through 20, he's saying, Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So that's, the Trinity there, because you can only baptize in the name of God. So, you know, with this, the baptism in the name of Jesus, which uh, was done in the authority of Jesus, that wasn't the formula. Well, some do believe that that was an alternate formula at the beginning, uh, but Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. In name. And uh, initially, or at least in some period in the uh, early post-apostolic period, uh, it was done in, through questions. Do you believe in the Father? And then you say, yeah, I do. And, and, and do you believe in the Son? I do. And do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I do. Doing that. And there were different modes. Of, there were different uh, 
form. So all say in the name of the Father, the Son, Holy Spirit. All like that. It, it has to be with water and with that for it to be valid. It says, uh, be baptized. The servant of God is baptized. They have different uh, ways of doing it. Uh, in the different rites. So that's God, God, the Trinity, the one in being, inconsubstantial, undivided. Uh, God, who is one being, has to be more than one person because God is eternal love and the only being in eternity is God. And since love is in relationship and love, a relationship has to be between uh, at least two persons, <clears throat> and here it's three, three persons. <clears throat> to, for for love to exist, and if uh, love had to wait until God created rational creatures, then God is not all powerful, and He's contingent; He's dependent on us to become love. So anyway, and and God would not be immutable, also at that case, because God would change with that, and uh, so uh, God, so God has to be le at least. Persons and why three persons? Because here Jesus names, baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And the name, which is was the polite way of saying God, Hashem, and the um, and it's the name and not the names that they have there. So Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I command you, not what's popular, not what's easy, not what uh, tickles your fancy. No, all that I have commanded you. And we always have to remember that uh, putting the teachings of Christ into effect, all of the teachings, is take up with me, taking up your cross and follow him. Because it'll uh, result in opposition, not just opposition from the, wor the world and the devil, but also from the flesh, from within ourselves. Having that. All that I can do, and this was just one of the most comforting, but also the one of the most challenging of the passages of Scripture. Behold, I'm with you all days, even unto the consummation of the world. Behold, I'm with you uh, always, even to the end of the world, even to the fulfillment of the world, even to the ends of the world, even to the end of the age, or ages. Matthew 28, 18 through 20. So he's with us no matter what. I'm there with you. No matter what you're going through, I'm there with you, Jesus is telling us. But also, you know, I see all that you do, good or bad. I'm with you always. The church has received the solemn command of Christ from the apostles. So it's a solemn command. It's not an, a, uh, an option. Because, well, uh, you can spread the faith if you feel like it. No, this was given specifically to the apostles and chiefly to the apostles and to the successors of the apostles the bishops and the like but it's actually given all to all of us we all have the great commission to spread the faith through word and example because if you do it by word and you don't do it by example it's not going to work yeah so although you know people often attack the church or Christianity or religion in general, uh, because there are bad people who have that label. Well, it, that doesn't disqualify uh, the teachings of, of the faith or the, the credentials of the authority of faith by the fact that there are people who profess it and don't live it, but do the opposite. There are hip every group has hypocrites, every group has weak people, every group has uh, uh, deluded people and uh, that the problem is picking and choosing in Christian ethics what you want to do no it's a whole thing as uh, someone once said uh, the revela the the feast of the lamb the wedding feast of the lamb is a sit-down meal it's not a smorgasbord not a cafeteria takeout it's a whole thing so then the Catholic means the Catholic means universal, but it comes from kataton holon, according to the whole, and that means according to the whole of the human race. Everybody's invited, but uh, you have to come in on uh, Christ's terms into the faith. 
uh, into the church. And uh, kataton holon also means according to the whole of the doctrine, the whole of the teaching, the whole of the life of the faith. The one holy Catholic and apostolic faith of Jesus Christ. The church has received the solemn command of Christ from the apostles. She must fulfill it to the very ends of the earth. To go, so the, the vocation of the church is to be Catholic, to be everywhere, and to uh, uh, acculturate. But it's acculturation that's part of the evangelization of the world, uh, the conversion of the world. We are not to be converted by the world. It's, it's supposed to be the other way around. But often, uh, especially when things uh, get cozy, when the church gets cozy with the people in power, all that, and so that, so the great temptations of uh, power and uh, wealth and luxury, okay, and, and, all, and all sorts of other temptations. But so, uh, and also fear, you know, cowardice. She don't want to... Uh, uh, get in trouble with the people of power, people who can kill you, or people who can take uh, the goodies that you want away from you, the material goodies. So this cowardice in that. Um, so it's go to the whole ends of the earth, Acts 1.8. Therefore, she makes the words of the apostle her own Woe to me if I do not preach the gospel, St. Paul said to the Corinthians. 1 Corinthians 9, 16. And that's true. Uh, that, uh, <clears throat> like Jeremiah, I, I'm speaking personally, I cannot uh, live, in a sense, I, I'm, I'm driven to this. The love of Christ impels us, as St. Paul said. The, uh, to proclaim the faith and to teach a faith and to correct errors about it and uh, to share the, the wonderful relationship I have with Jesus Christ in and through the church, his bride, and uh, to share all that I know. I remember I had a fifth grade class one time and at the end of the class they made cards for me. And one of them, what was it? Yeah, fifth grade, it was the fourth grade. Um, and one kid wrote, Thank you for teaching us everything you know. Well, uh, I can't even teach myself everything I know. The, uh, it's constantly growing. Uh, learning the faith is constantly growing. And that's one of the wonders of heaven, is constantly finding out more and more fascinating experiences of, in God, who's infinite and eternal, and we're not. So we can, we're constantly growing in that, that adventure of, of the reality of, of uh, the total relationship with God. So, and accordingly, never ceases to send heralds of the gospel, so uh, the missionaries, but also that's one of the, uh, the functions of the church, should be the herald of the kingdom. To proclaim the kingdom which is here and not yet, you're not fulfilled. Uh, <clears throat> but <clears throat> once it's totally fulfilled in Christ, who died and rose, but not totally fulfilled in us <clears throat> and here on earth. But the kingdom is here on earth because the fullness of the kingdom is, there is heaven, and especially when heaven envelops everything at the second coming of Christ. Until the time as the infant churches are fully established. So that uh, the missionary work there to, uh, uh, to uh, in indigenize the church, that uh, it sh uh, the people of, of the mission territory should, it should be uh, staffed, as it were, by, by them, by the local people. But of course, we also, the church is universal, invite everybody else to help in the church, in every country. Um, but then, um, to, and then uh, the, the churches, with, as they grow more and more into maturity, that they send out missionaries. And we see this now like in Africa, uh, Africa sending missionaries to Europe, because Europe is uh, 
lapsed in many ways. This, uh, in the, when a movie, I think it was Spencer Tracy was in it, he was a priest in it, and it was on a, 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 this volcano explodes, but before that he said, it was a French colony or something like that, and he said, oh, oh you're in France, was the, old, uh, the oldest daughter of the church. Well, she slipped a bit. So, and slipped a lot more than uh, it was in the late 50s, 1950s, but uh, who was it? Uh, um, uh, what was the singer that was in it? Uh, did it my way, what's his name, whatever. He was in that too. But, um, this is it. And can themselves continue the work of evangelization? And it's all of it. It's the same thing. You know, if, you know, we're often infants, just feeding on the milk of of the faith. But that shouldn't be our permanent state. We should really get into the meat of the faith, and we should be not just taking but giving in the faith. It's service, service to the local church, the local community, different ways, especially service to the poor and the needy. Uh, but uh, and uh, evangelization, bringing this to others, uh, bringing the faith to those in our families who have lapsed, or who are lukewarm, or who are uh, uh, ignorant, and that's a lot of people uh, who are in these situations. Uh, so that's I think because not to do it uh, counterproductively, so you know, we don't beat people over the head with with the with this Bible. We uh, share. That's what we do. We share. We can't force. Uh, people have tried that. You know, remember the Inquisition and the like. Uh, that doesn't work. In fact, it uh, opens oneself up to uh, evil forces and corrupts uh, the person and corrupts society and, and uh, uh, corrupts the church people. So that's that's. Uh, uh, a, a grave temptation from the devil to uh, do this by force, especially the force of violence, including murderous violence. That doesn't spread the faith. It destroys the faith in many ways. For, uh, in the place that you want to put it in. The, the gates of hell will not prevail. The church will always be on earth. But it doesn't mean the church will be a flourishing on, in every place or that the church won't go extinct in every place. So like, look at North Africa, the cities of North Africa, Latin North Africa, Carthage, all this, they were great, they were actually more the center of Latin Christianity uh, in the uh, uh, the fourth, fifth, sixth century than, uh, than Rome was uh, at the time. So, but uh, not that the Pope wasn't the, the, uh, the head of the world. The, uh, of the church, or the uh, this chief steward of the church, and, and the head of the whole Latin church. He was the only patriarch of the West, although later there were other uh, minor patriarchs, like uh, said Aquileia, and then uh, later Lisbon, and so on. But, but, uh, um, but uh, the patriarch of the West is the functional, the functional patriarch for the Latin church. Uh, the Pope, although uh, they, they dropped that title, that uh, uh, an Eastern Orthodox wonder said, "Well, that's the probably the one title we don't want you to drop for the Pope." But uh, so, continue on. But the Church is driven by the Holy Spirit, not just mildly encouraged, but driven. In, the Holy Spirit is insisting that we do this, driven by the Holy Spirit to do her part for the full realization of the plan of God, which is. Uh, to love, first of all, to love others, and, and to love concretely, to help people according to their real needs. Uh, it doesn't mean encouraging people to be lazy or whatever like that, or, or uh, dependent or codependent or whatever, but uh, to help people in their real needs, and, and uh, applying the corporal and spiritual works of mercy, and uh, instructing the ignorant and, and correcting the erroneous, uh, uh, correcting the sinner, so those are spiritual works of mercy.
as well. But of course, it has to be done in a merciful way. So, in the, oh, the temptation, especially when you're, when the church is being attacked, or we are being attacked personally, uh, is to use the same attitude to those who attack us, and that's that's uh, counterproductive. So it's and it's not, uh, and that's not the way of God. A sarcasm can be very useful, and actually, in witticism and stuff like that, but, uh, and pointing out sometimes bluntly the uh, the misinformation that people have about the church. Uh, the, we can hit that. Uh, so do that, but uh, but we're driven by the Holy Spirit to do her part for the full realization of the plan of God, because we're fellow workers with God, as Saint Paul says in First Corinthians. God who has continued, who has constituted Christ as the source of salvation for the whole world, for the whole world, for everyone. No one is saved except by and through Christ. Does this mean that people have to, that people who do no fault of their own <clears throat> don't believe in Christ or don't even know about Christ or are misinformed about Christ that they're damned to hell? No, it doesn't mean that. So, um, but it also doesn't mean that people who believe all the right stuff, uh, that they're all said and they don't have to live it, uh, or that and that they don't have to repent of their sin, grave sins and stuff. Oh, no, that's a fatal uh, error. Uh, we must repent of our known willed grave sins. Otherwise, we're citizens of hell, not citizens of heaven. And... Uh, uh, our label and even our you know, getting on the sacramental uh, conveyor belt uh, and jumping off that at the end, of it, then uh, that will just uh, add to our condemnation if we uh, reject the grace of those sacraments and reject the grace of, of the proclamation because we're not A, interested, or B, it uh, gets in the way of our uh, sinful preferences. So, so, she draws, by the proclamation of the gospel, she, that's the church, Ecclesia, prepares them for baptism, snatches them from the slavery of error, and she incorporates them into Christ so that in love for him they grow to full maturity. So that's, that's the goal in this life, is to become a fully mature Christian. To love, love God with your whole heart, mind, and soul, and your neighbor as yourself. To know and apply the teachings of the faith. And in a mature fashion. The effect of her work is that whatever good is found sown in the minds and hearts of men, or in the rights and customs of people, are not only preserved from destruction, but are purified, raised up, and perfected for the glory of God, the confusion of the devil, and the happiness of man. So, let's say this this you know uh, this this uh, tribe in in uh, in, in uh, this, uh, the mountains of New Guinea, let's say, and they have various customs, religious customs even. <coughs> uh, they can be taken and given a Christian meaning or, or made compatible with it. Uh, so, so it says, the, the good that is found in the minds and hearts of men or in the rights and customs of peoples. Uh, there are some things that can't be, like human sacrifice or whatever like that, or uh, cult prostitution, I think it, you can't uh, uh, make compatible, obviously. But remember, we are to <coughs> acculturate, not acculturate. Which we, all this Pachamama stuff is acculturation, is, is uh, syncretism with, with uh, an incompatible aspect of, 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 a, of, a, of a paganism, of Amazonian and Indian uh, pre Christian religions. Now, there's plenty that's compatible, but there's stuff that's not. Then there's stuff that's superstition, it's not really. Um, idolatry, but it's it's not really compatible with Christianity. So, you know, uh, so there's an automatic thing that you don't have to participate in, 
whatever, whatever it is, you know, throw the candy on the roof of the building, uh, whatever, stuff like that. Uh, bury a llama fetus in the foundation of the building. That uh, not uh, the, the, throwing the candy on the top, which is a waste of candy. Uh, that would be a superstition. Uh, but uh, burying a llama fetus uh, that that's, that would be uh, straying off into uh, very close to anyway idolatry. Uh, that's a, a pagan custom that's not compatible. And especially burying uh, live human beings in the foundation of a building, that's definitely not compatible, which uh, some forms of the worship of Pachamama uh, uh, promote even to this day. Uh, so there's been uh, exposés of this in Bolivia and other places. But... Um, So we have to do that, and, and, and cultures preserved from destruction. So you know, one of the flaws in the attempt of evangelization and civilization to uh, uh, Western civilization, to the native peoples in North America, was often the eradication of the culture. And uh, it's interesting, this, for all the... Uh, the things of the, the Spanish, all the problems of the Spanish thing, and murderous problems even, uh, and also eradication of cultural things that would, would be fine, like, you know, the quipu in, in Peru, the knots that, the quote-unquote speaking knots that would, uh, you know, say something, they, they often the people would do it, they were considered devilish somehow or other, and were suppressed, and, and they were attempted and even killed sometimes, some of these people were killed, who wouldn't give it up. Uh, Customs like that, and, uh, uh, and, and they, all sorts of things can be uh, a, a channel of the gospel rather than uh, opposed to it. And, and we see this in the in the Old Testament with the uh, the Hebrew legislations. Their customs, uh, all of those customs, were either parallels to or directly taken from their pagan neighbors' customs that were taken. From. Uh, there was something like, you know, you'd say, well, Passover, well, a, a, a memorial meal of some sort, of, 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 uh, that's, that was not uncommon uh, among the pagan peoples. But, of course, the meaning of it and everything and the, and the historicity of it was different. And so things can be changed. And, of course, the whole sacrificial system, which was rooted in feeding the gods, uh, God doesn't need to be fed. But they, they kept up the animal sacrifices and all this stuff until... Because then that became a prefiguration of Christ, and uh, the, the meanings were changed uh, uh, all along. So, yeah. not only are these saved from destruction, but purified, raised up, and perfected for the glory of God. So that is the thing: the uh, the conversion of the culture. Uh, which is an all, constantly an ongoing thing. So you know, we talked about you know, uh, Christ, Catholic culture, Christian culture, and uh, it's there, but it was always it always needed for deeper evangelization, deeper sanctification. But now uh, we have to start uh, from scratch, often now with uh, in Europe with many people because of the uh, the culture of death is. Is incompatible with with Catholic Christianity or any form of Christianity, or or any form of of, of, of it's contrary to natural law even. But um, the uh, but uh, hasn't there always been among the elites, the power people, a culture of death, uh, you know, murderous, uh, there for to keep their power to advance their power, you know, con uh, aggressive conquest and all this stuff. But you know, the example of the. Uh, coming over here of the Europeans, that's a thing. So they say gold, greed, and glory. Uh, God, God, gold, and glory. But uh, the gold and the power and everything, that, that was the main thing. God, uh, God was being manipulated for this. The faith was being made by many people. There were many, many sincere missionaries and uh, people who spoke up for the native people, such as Bartolome de las Casas and others. And, and, they were, uh, and many of the missionaries have been given a bad rap, which is not, not appropriate. One example is, is St. Uh, Junipero Serra, 
who has been uh, slandered in a very ghastly way by people who don't know their history, but um, or don't want to. Uh, so we see all that around. So the good, it's for the glory of God. Everything is to be done for the glory of God. And the confusion of the devil, not the confusion of us. So uh, uh, unthinking syncretism is not for the confusion of the devil, it's for the advancement of the devil. You know, all this Christo-paganism and the like. And, uh, and, the same, and, and radical secularism uh, of, of that is uh, also not... God has to pervade everything that we are. There's secularity, yes, it has its own realm, but secularism, excluding God, excluding uh, faith, excluding natural law, all this other stuff, it, it's not... It's uh, destructive. It's a confusion of the devil, not confusing the devil. And, uh, and not really helping to the happiness of man, which is what the devil deludes us into thinking that we're doing. With uh, hedonism and greed, applying our greed and all this stuff, that this is going to make us happy. It doesn't. Just look at the, some of the wealthiest people in the world. Uh, they seem to be wretchedly unhappy and they have... Everything that they thought would make them happy. They have fame, they have power, they have a wealth, they have luxury, they have this, they, they have, a, they get to apply their will and all this stuff, but they're uh, often just plain immature and other times just totally dissolved by this. And has the obligation, so each disciple of Christ has the obligation of spreading the faith to the best of his ability. That's worth repeating. Each disciple of Christ has the obligation of spreading the faith to the best of his ability. Maybe just in a small circle, in your family, other things like that. So, And don't become discouraged when they roll their eyes or whatever. However, while anyone can baptize those who believe, so we are, uh, you know, if a, a non-believer baptizes a person using the I baptize in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit with water, intends to do what Christ intends to do with that, or intended to do, or what the church intends to do, even if you don't believe in it, that's valid. <coughs> but, uh, however, it is for the priest to complete the building up of the body in the Eucharistic sacrifice, also in chrismation and confirmation, and the other sacraments. But the height is the Eucharist, which is the Eucharistic sacrifice. And some uh, non Catholics say, aha, did you Catholics, uh, your, uh, your Mass is a, is a blasphemy. It's a, uh, you think you're killing Christ over and over again or whatever. Or, or, or it's your thing, it's all you. No, it's this, the Eucharistic sacrifice is the one sacrifice of Calvary shown forth in an unbloody mode, uh, uh, just as we receive uh, Christ in an unbloody mode. You know, the, the species of the wine remains the same, species of the, of the bread remains the same, but the essence, the substance, is truly and totally changed into Jesus Christ, truly present, body, blood, soul, and divinity, full humanity, full divinity, present. And so, so, but it's, it's so the the Eucharistic sacrifice is the one sacrifice. It's the sacrifice of Calvary, uh, made present in our time. It's the living memorial of it. It's the real presence of it. Thus, fulfilling the words of the prophet from the rising of the Malachi, Malachi uh, one eleven, from the rising of the sun even to its going down. My name is great among the Gentiles, and in every place there is a sacrifice, and there is offered to my name a clean offering. Thus the church prays and likewise labors, so, so that into the people of God the body of the Lord and the temple of the Holy Spirit may pass the fullness of the whole world, and that in Christ, the head of all things, all honor and glory may be rendered to the Creator, the Father of the universe. It will stop there. And let's pray the Our Father. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, that will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, deliver us from evil. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.